I like that. So I want to first of all thank our pastor for giving me an opportunity to stand here again. Um, I always say that means I didn't say anything stupid the last time because <laughs> he didn't have to come and clean anything up. And I also want to give thanks to the creator for giving me an opportunity to stand and the power to stand. Because it is that energy, that, that love, that God that we believe in, that we feel that we're all connected to, that gives us the power and the will to stand. And I'm grateful for that. I want to talk to us for a little while from the subject, the company of strangers. The company of strangers. You know, many years ago, I was serving as a an intern pastor type situation, but I would visit the open door community. Is anybody familiar with that? The open door community is a place that used to be, it may still be there, it used to be on um, East Ponce or Ponce de Leon. And it was a place where people would go to get food. We used to serve them sandwiches and whatever we had a couple times a day. And so I was working there and there was this man Oh my goodness, he was scary. He was this big man, very strong, very boisterous, and he was always telling everybody what to do and where to go and bossing people around and telling them to sit down and go here, go do that. Don't go get back in line and get any more. He would tell them what to do. And he was very frightening and, and he was very demanding. And one day I was leaving that place. We used to have to park in the back behind the building. And I was leaving that place, and as I was coming out, there was this little skinny driveway. So there wasn't a whole lot of room. So it wasn't like I could really avoid anybody there. And there was, at the beginning of the driveway, when I'm trying to get out and I had to get back to school, here was that man. Just standing there, looking mean and scary, and I'm there by myself. And I said, oh my Lord, what am I gonna do? So he stood next to my car, he came up next to my car and he hit my window and I was like, oh Lord, what's happening now? And I put the window down and I'm like, scared of this man. And he said to me, who are you? Well, I'm sitting here thinking, he knows I came here from the seminary so I ought to say something religious, I'm a child of God. <laughs> <laughs> and he said to me, well, who am I? And I said to him, I don't know, what's your name? And he said, how come you didn't see me as a child of God? Talk about a slap in the face. Talk about somebody pouring cold water over you. He said, how come you didn't see me as a child of God? He said, do you know that these people on the street would not respond to you, to you the way they respond to me? Don't you believe God has to have angels in all different forms in all different places and this is where I've been dispatched? That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody says something like that to you, it is life changing. It is startling. And that man changed my life, helped me get to a new level of consciousness, showed me that I wasn't looking at people as the spiritual beings as they are, that they are. I was judging people based on their outside appearance. And here I was preaching one thing and saying another thing, afraid of this man and couldn't see the divine in him and couldn't see that maybe his assignment was just a little bit different than mine. We share a world with all kinds of people. We share a world with people we call strangers. We don't know them. There's a whole bunch of them in this world. As of Friday at 12.45 on Friday afternoon, we shared this world with approximately 7 million 372, no, 7,372,455,371 people as of 12.45 on Friday, which means it's probably a bigger number now. So we have all kinds of opportunities, even here in the metro Atlanta area. In this area, we have 5.7 million people. In this country, we have over 300 million people. 
You have so many opportunities to connect with people who might just be, be the blessing that you need. So many people that we call strangers and so many people that we walk around afraid of and maybe they're just the people we need that will change our lives. That brings us to the text for today. It was a text written to a community of Christians. And in that community, of course, there's, when you have, you know, they say when, more, when, when two or three are gathered in the name of God, there's, there, there I am in the midst. I always say when two or three are gathered, there is the opportunity for some stuff to happen. <laughs> Where there's two or three. And so in this community, church community, there is, of course, conflict and people eat, treating each other like strangers. And there, was, there were things going on. And so this uh, writer had to say to them, look, let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. At that time, people moved around from one place another, to another frequently. And as they were traveling, they would go to, from one community, one Christian community, to another. And so what this writer was saying is when people, when strangers come into your midst, t treat them with respect, treat them with hospitality. They had religious leaders who would come through and preach a little bit and go somewhere else and come back through. This text, they were telling them, when these people come to you, you treat them with respect, treat them right. Because these are all your brothers and sisters. This is how you stay connected with the rest of the Christian community because you treat everyone who comes your way like a brother and sister. And if you love people like that, of course it's going to extend from just a particular community to everybody. So the call was for us not to neglect to show hospitality to strangers and that was to mean anybody. But you know, it seems like for us today we don't have that same spirit of connectedness. It seems like that message could be to us here in 2017. Because we live in a world, my friends, and you know, I told my wife, I said, I don't want to preach this sermon because I like it being funny and, and you know, making people laugh and the jokes and stuff. But this is what was given to me for today. That we live in a world where we are being driven to see one another as strangers. That we live in a world where we see more negative than we see positive. So what do we do? We see people with fear because somebody told us to be afraid of that person and somebody told us that that one's gonna hurt us and somebody told us that people like that are like this. No, remember that man that saw me in the driveway. Why didn't you see me as a child of God? Why, do you see, why didn't you see me as someone who can bless your life as you bless mine? You know, it seems like we've taken that concept. You know, when we're little, we teach our kids about stranger danger. Well, now we've taken it to another level where as adults, we look at other, one another and say stranger danger. When it's somebody that could be someone positive in your life. Somebody who could potentially be a friend. We see them as a stranger, so what do we do? We lock ourselves away. We don't go anywhere, we don't do anything, we don't give anything, we don't, we don't volunteer, we don't go to certain places because we're afraid. We stay home, we keep our doors locked, we keep our small circle of friends. But you know, it's good having friends. I like what um, Ralph Waldo Emerson said. He said, a friend is one of the blessings of old friends is that you can be stupid with them. I like being stupid with my friends. But to, on a really serious note, we have an opportunity, you and me, because we are different kind of people. We have an opportunity to shift this world. We have an opportunity to show people, I am not afraid of you. Because I don't even know you yet. I am not afraid of you because somebody else told me to be afraid of you because I look in you and I see more in your eyes than I see what people are saying. 
We have a very profound opportunity to let our life and our love be a healing force in the communities that we are a part of. We have an opportunity to bring a different vibration, to shift the energy of everywhere we go, my brothers and sisters. We have an opportunity to go beyond looking at one another as strangers. Parker Palmer, he's a theologian and he's an author, and he wrote this book called The Company of Strangers, hence the title of my sermon. But in the book, he says, the world public contains a vision of our oneness, our unity, our interdependence upon one another, despite the fact that we are strangers to one another and will stay strangers for the most part, we occupy some common space and we share some common resources and we have common opportunities and we must somehow learn to live together. To acknowledge that one is a member of the public is to recognize that we are all members of one another. I read you those numbers of all these people in the world over seven billion people, over five million in this metro area. We have such an opportunity to connect, to extend hospitality to strangers because people are wounded and, wait, and they're waiting to hear from us. They're waiting for our hospitality. They're waiting for us to reach out, but not to reach out to change people, but to reach out to love people, to reach out and accept people exactly the way they are and get to know them. Henry Nouwen said, he's a Christian mystic, he said his hospitality means primarily the creation of free space where the stranger can enter and become a friend instead of an enemy. Hospitality is not to change people, but to offer them a space where change can take place. It's not to bring a man and woman over to our side, but it's to offer freedom, not disturbed by dividing lines. You know, this is one of the things, Pastor, that I like about this place. When we were first MCC, we used to have people come over to that other building and come over and get food and come over and get clothes and come over and get what they need. What they, need. they were invited. And they didn't have to say, we didn't greet them at the door, like at the border, and say, what's your religion? We didn't greet them at the door and say, what's your race? What's your ethnicity? We saw a person, an individual, a soul, and somebody who needed some food. And we met their needs. Come on in and get the food. And then we took it another level where we got this bus. And saying we still want to reach people. We want to go to people that we once thought of strangers and see their humanity and do what we can do to be helpful. That's why this text tells us to let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. That's what we're in this world for. But the second part of the text spoke to a trait that the hearers of the early church had in common with us today. Because I'm sitting here telling you to go do things for strangers. I'm telling you to go help people. I'm telling you to reach out to people. I'm telling you to get to know people. But, you know, we live in a world, and I, I'm in the same place too. We want to know what's in it for me. What's in it for me? It, you're telling me to do all this stuff. I'm not all that altruistic. What's in it for me? Well, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Because for that community, what was in it for them was they were reminded that you could be entertaining angels without knowing it. Because in that community, they remembered back the story about things like Abraham and Sarah of being visited and being told that they were going to have a child. They remember stories like that. And so when you say that you could potentially be entertaining angels unaware, that meant something to them. That was what was in it for them. But what's in it for you? It's 2017. I got six things that I want to tell you is in it for you when you meet up with strangers, when you connect with strangers. First of all, when you meet a stranger, you meet a stranger on a common ground. When you meet a stranger, you're all in the same place. How many of us have gone on a plane and sat next to somebody and told them your life story? Because you're all confined in this one little place. Have you sat, have, am I the only one that's done that? Okay, don't make me think I'm crazy. 
And don't tell me, okay, Rev, I'm not, never going on a trip with you. <laughs> but there's something that happens when we're in confined places sometimes, in a waiting room, wherever we are, in a plane. We could be somewhere and we're going through something and we get to a stranger and a stranger can look at you and say, is, it, can I, is everything okay? And you will open up in a way that you wouldn't open up to everybody else. And why is that? It's because strangers see us as we are. They don't know you. They don't know your history. They don't know your family. They don't know your reputation. A stranger just sees a human being and just listens or reaches out to you. And so you can tell the stranger something that you, you know you're never going to see this person again. So you tell them. You tell them how you're feeling. You tell them what's going on because you know they're going to take that with you. And if they tell somebody, the person they don't know doesn't know you anyway. So strangers meet on common ground. That's the benefit. And the next thing is when we meet a stranger, it gives us an opportunity to let go of some of our fears. It gives us an opportunity to face our fears and deal with it. You know... I read, fears make strangers of people who would be friends. Because sometimes we allow our prejudices and, and, uh, and our misunderstandings to block us to connect, from connecting with people that we can have wonderful relationships with. You know, I, I um, being an, a, a black woman, an African-American woman, and some of you all have probably experienced it, I've been in places where I've had people say, well, I didn't know that I was going to be friends with you because I'd never been with a black person before. This is true. We miss people because of preconceived notions. When we could connect with strangers that could bring, bring positivity into our life, could give you the gift you've been waiting for all your life, and we miss them because you don't look like me. You don't talk like me. I don't understand you. I only can be with people who look like me, think like me, talk like me. That's not true, my friends. We can go to somebody and see them as a human being, a child of God, like this man said to me, and connect with them, and you never know what gifts they're going to bring into your life. Number three, people... With people, we're drawn out of ourselves. People will draw you out of yourself. Sometimes we can get so self-centered and so self-focused that we forget that there's more outside. You know, I'm an introvert. I, I think it's kind of a joke that, you know, I have an extroverted vocation, but I'm an introvert. Anybody who knows me, think about it. After church, you don't see me, I run away. Think about it. You talk about it. I, and, and when it's time for church to come, I get here just in time to do what I need to do. Think about it. I'm telling on myself. But it's because I am an introvert. And if it wasn't for strangers and if it wasn't for people, I would stay in my house and maybe send you a video. <laughs> but there's something about people there's something in me that wants to connect with people. And yet I, I'm, 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 I'm sometimes I'm not afraid of y'all. Y'all aren't too scary. <laughs> if you were, I wouldn't tell you because that's not politically correct. <laughs> but the thing is, it's because I know I have something to share with you. It brings me out of my house. I'll get up. I'll go do something. I'll come out and, and I'll be present with people that I don't really know y'all. If you really think about it, I don't really know you. I don't really know you. I don't really know you. I don't know what you do when you leave here. I don't know where you go. I don't know who your friends are. All I know is you are an individual that I have learned to love because I accept you for who you are right where you are. So yes, people draw us out of ourselves. But the fourth thing I want to say about people, strangers, is that mutual res responsibility becomes evident and mutual aid becomes possible when we're with strangers. Mutual responsibility becomes evident. 
What do I mean by that? I'll let Maya Angelou tell you what I mean by that. She said, it's good to remember that in crisis, human beings forget for a while their ignorances, their biases, and their prejudices. For a little while, strangers help, help strangers and neighbors help neighbors. Think about it. Let's not wait for a disaster to connect, connect with people. When you think about it, when you've been through a tornado, when you've been through a hurricane, when you've been through a flood, when you've been through fire, when you've been through changing uh, uh, political climates, we find ourselves sometimes in places we don't want to be. And we wait until those times to be able to see one another because we're all in the same boat. Let's not wait until we get into a crisis to see our neighbor and want to get to know our neighbor. Let's not wait until we have to connect with somebody to reach out to them. We have an opportunity to connect in advance, to reach out to what we call a stranger and help them to become our friend. So we have mutual accountability as, as strangers. But let me go to the fifth thing. I like this one. With strangers, your opinions become audible and you become accountable. Think about it. If you weren't around people, you would just be stuck in your own thoughts. And then sometimes getting stuck in our own thoughts is a bad place to be. Sometimes getting stuck in your own ideas and never being able to voice them to anybody else. We have those what was I thinking moments, but usually they're stirred, they're, they're, they're triggered by something that we've heard outside of ourselves, and we say, what were we thinking? Or somebody else will say to you, what the heck are you talking about? We need people. We need strangers. We need other people in our lives. We need people who aren't just always going to say yes to us. We need people who are going to question us, who are going to push us, who are going to say, that doesn't make sense, We're going to say, maybe you need to look at it this way. We need people who are going to help us to grow, y'all. People, strangers, give us an opportunity to talk and share our thoughts. And finally, we need strangers, particularly these days. We need strangers because there is power in numbers. I look at some of the marches that I've seen. I look at some of the large crowds who have been making statements, and I see there is powers in, power in numbers. I'm reminded during this Black History Month, I think about my own ancestors and think about even things I've seen in my lifetime where it took people standing together and with, standing with strangers and seeing the value in a stranger because the civil rights movement was a mixture of all kinds of people. It wasn't just black people. It was everybody. We stood side by side. We connected with one another because we knew what was right. Because we saw that somebody who was a whole human being was not treated, being treated as such. There's power in numbers. And so we have an opportunity, my friends, to be a light among these numbers. We have a power to bring a positive energy to a crowd. We change the energy in a room just by walking in because you have raised the frequency of your own life. My friends, I got to go to my final point. And my final point is, one of the things that drop, blocks us from connecting with other people is because many of us are still strangers to ourselves. You don't even know yourself. If you don't know yourself, how, can you, how do you know who you're presenting to somebody else? How do you know you're worthy to be in certain places? How do you know you don't have to be afraid because something in you is more powerful than anything that's outside of you? How do you know just how wonderful you are unless you get to get rid of the stranger that is you? At the core of who you are, at the core of who you've been created to be, you are a manifestation of God. You are a divine spirit. 
You are not your history. You are not the things that have happened to you in the past. You are not your circumstances. You are none of these things. There's nothing to divide you from somebody else because you are awesomely made right where you are. I just came to tell you, you might be a stranger to me, but don't ever be a stranger to yourself. Learn how to love yourself. Learn how to know who you really are. Get rid of all these negative and and wrong ideas that we have about ourselves because you are wonderfully made. I'm looking at some really awesome people. I am. How do I know this? Because you come out and you try to grow. You come out and you try to connect with other people. Everybody doesn't do that. There's lots of empty seats in here. Opportunity for other people to come and be about change. But they're not here. But you are trying to see what you can do with your life, see how you can change in your life, see what you can be in this world and what you can bring to us. My friends, I'm not gonna talk about strangers anymore. I'm gonna talk about divine beings who are wonderfully made, who can connect with other divine beings who are wonderfully made. So I came to tell you, you are no longer a stranger to me because you are a blessing to my life. There's something in you that touches me. I want you to look around at each other and see that there's something in your neighbor that touches you. There's a gift that they bring. There's a love that they bring. There's a light that they bring. Don't be afraid of the stranger. First of all, don't be afraid of the stranger in you. Don't be afraid of the stranger in me. And I can be kind of strange sometimes, yeah. But at the core, I am nothing but an essence of love like you are. That's what you see when you look at me, and that's what you see when you look at each other, and that's really all I got to say. <laughs>